Hey, welcome back guys, JC here, and I am very excited to tell you that I was wrong. If you watch my review for this uh, FreeSky XM uh, receiver, I said that uh, there is no telemetry whatsoever, not even RSSI. So, but you can get RSSI into an on-screen display using the RSSI pad. But turns out I was wrong twice. There is RSSI, and you don't need the RSSI pad. So shout out to whoever uh, sent me a link to the FreeSky website where it says that the RSSI output is on channel 16. And I even told him, no, no, that's, that's crazy. That, that doesn't even make sense. Why would FreeSky make life easy on us? But after messing around with it for the last hour, uh, I finally figured it out. They're not lying. So let me apply power to this real quick. And... Notice that I don't have anything, it's not wired in any special way. I just have ground power and my SBOS signal wire, nothing else, nothing going to the RSSI pad. Hey JC, welcome back. The reason I said this is crazy is because what most of us have been doing is with the XSR, X4RSB, D4R2, and many others, we have been going to inputs and creating a channel with the RSSI value, then going to mixer, creating another channel to output the RSSI value back to the flight controller. That way you can see your RSSI in your on-screen display and everything else. The thing is, with this receiver, you, I mean, it is true. Whenever you come down here to discover new sensors, press enter, you get absolutely nothing. Not even RSSI or, you know, the A1 or A2, nothing like that. So this is where the confusion came in. Without that RSSI value, how would we output it to the flight controller? Like I said, it's true. It's automatically placed on channel 16. So here's how you set it up. Let's just go into beta flight, connect. First go, well, you'll notice we're getting nothing on RSSI right now. I have my transmitter turned on, nothing. Go to receiver. And for our RSSI channel, we want to choose 16. Now, if you look over here, roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle, then we have auxiliary 1. But auxiliary 1 is technically channel number 5. This means that auxiliary 12 is technically channel 16, because you have to add in these four. So we, we want to be seeing an RSSI value on this bar right here. If we go to the CLI and type in set AUX, we see the max auxiliary channels is uh, right now set to six, but we need 12. So type set max AUX channels space equals space 12, and then press enter. If you get this message, then you typed it in right. If you uh, get this message, then you did not type it in right. So once you get this message here, just type save. And one more thing thing I need to uh, explain. Type set RSSI and you want to make sure that your RSSI PPM invert is turned off. If it's turned on then it's going to be inversed and instead of showing a value of near 100 it's going to show a value near 0. Also don't worry about RSSI scale. That doesn't apply to us. That's only if you were using uh, if you were wiring a wire from the RSSI pad to the flight controller. So this has nothing to do with us. If you did have to change this from on to off, make sure you save. Now if we go back to receiver, we now get an RSSI value on auxiliary 12. I forgot to save it apparently, so I will just set this to 16 again. Now if we go back to setup, we now have RSSI. And you may think it's not working because it's showing 100%, but that's because my transmitter and receiver are, are side by side. If I move my transmitter away, then now you see that it is actually working. I can wave it in the air. It's moving up and down. And that's it. Now for uh, your on-screen display, if you are using a flight controller that's capable of using the Betaflight's OSD feature, let me turn all this off real quick. All I use is RSSI and voltage, that's it. Uh, so let's just save. Uh, if you're not using uh, 
a flight controller with a built-in OSD, you're using something else with like MW OSD firmware, it's, it's still going to work because as long as you see your RSSI value here, then that means it can be output to your on-screen display, no matter what type of on-screen display you're using. I'm just going to plug in a LiPo real quick, turn my transmitter on. Okay, now we see the RSSI. If I take my transmitter and wave it around, we see the RSSI changing. So it, matter of fact, does work and without any extra wiring, which is awesome. So whoever uh, pointed that out to me, and I said, no, no, that, that would never work. That sounds crazy. Uh, I do want to apologize to you, because turns out I'm the crazy one. I never would have thought FreeSky would make something easy for us. And that's pretty much going to do it, guys. So, uh, once again, I apologize. Look in the description below for the FreeSky XM playlist. Uh, to, if you want to know how to wire it in and bind it and all that, as well as some upcoming videos when I do a range test and many others. So thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.